it was right around the time that I started. Uh, I had just gotten married and and we were about to start a family. So, you know, you take on that responsibility of of knowing that this this needs to work for your future. This needs to work for your family and and your responsibilities and um, you know financially, obviously. So, um, I. I worked for some some really good people before I started training, and you you feel like you're with those people, and you feel like if you're learning, you know, and you're you're picking up the stuff from these successful people that you're going to be able to hopefully do it yourself. And um, so you kind of go into I I know I I went into it with confidence. Um, I I had like I was saying earlier, I had very good fortune with uh, as a groom. Then as an assistant trainer, so I felt like when I was going to go on my own, um, I took my wife's and and my wedding money, and we got a horse and and we claimed a couple horses, and and um, I felt very confident that I was going to make it work. And uh, I remember the first summer; it's it's eye opening. I went down the first day that I I went I made the move to Fortier and started up my business with nothing. I claimed two horses um, off the same man, the same trainer. They both won that day. And, uh, man, I thought this was easy. And uh, so I started running these horses back, and I, and I was protecting them and running them in starter allowances. And it was, uh, I believe I was 0 for 26 before I won my first race. And and it was, it was eye-opening. It was definitely a, a huge wake-up call. And... Um, I'll never forget. I had a, a very good friend of mine, uh, Wilf Jones. Uh, he was he was quite a bit older than than I was, but he was a good friend of my father's. And uh, after I ran a horse one day, um, I won't tell you exactly what he said to me, but <laughs> I ran I ran a horse one day. And he came down to the unsaddling area, and he yelled at me to run that run these horses in the bleep bleep right spots you know and and it was a wake-up call and you know <laughs> he was right and uh you know i went back to the backside after that and i went over and to his barn and had a talk with him and uh you know it it took a lot to uh it took some humbling and some you know uh, um it took a wake-up call to realize that it's not that easy you know you can have all the confidence in the world but it's it's not that easy, and you have to um, you have to go through some really tough times to and be be able to persevere through them to uh, to continue on in this industry. It's it's hard. It's tough. There could be a lot of great times, and there could be a lot of benefits. But um, yeah, you have to be able to uh, uh, weather the storm to get there. I, I got to ask you about your your first uh, two purchases. And you said you took the wedding, the wedding money. And yeah. uh, what, now was your wife on board with this? And is she still your wife? <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> 30, 32 years later, she is. Yes. And she was definitely on board. Um, we were in the, the horse business together. We met, we met on the backstretch. And um, <clears throat> the, the two, the first two horses that I got, I was kind of a little off there. We, we purchased one while I was still an assistant and, and we were, um, we had just gotten married, but when I went out on my own, I, cl so I, we claimed two horses and I forget the exact sequence of, of it all exactly, but it was all at the very beginning of, um, going out on my own as a public trainer. <clears throat> oh man, that, that, as they say out there, that takes some, some balls, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but you, you did it. So definitely, um, it paid off for you. And after so many years, you're still going. Uh, you're not a gelding. You're you're you're, you're a great, you're a great, a great trainer. Thank you. Hey, look, man. Um, you know, this year you. Have